Hi, welcome back. I'm Jill from Copycat Crafts by Jill. And we're back today to start on this uh, folio. My suggestion is to pick your papers and make your folio to that size. I knew I wanted to use up some of the extra digitals that I printed from the dispatch, uh, Tracy Fox's dispatch kit. And in that kit are these pages where they're kind of already a 50 50 there split. I assume they're to fold in half to put in a journal but I'm using them, I'm going to cut them in half, and I'm using them as uh, file folder page covers for the base, for the journal base, or folio base. And this was what I decided I was going to do with this particular folder because of the measurements and the size of my paper. If you don't have, if you haven't picked out your paper, you don't know what size it is, you can go with whatever size, um, you know, you want, and then fit in your paper later. E either way works. It doesn't really matter. It's just, I had my digitals already, so I wanted to use them up. And um, I also had, t obviously, two different file folders here you can tell by color they are not the same and as I was working with this one I really wanted to reinforce the the spines I already started uh, distressing this side but I just used dollar outlet from the Dollar Tree their tape and I cut it cut a piece of straw to stick in there so that I don't keep losing the flap because if you've used dollar outlet tape it's so thin that once you you lose the sticky end unless you have about an hour and 47 minutes to kill you just throw throw it away because it's not worth trying to waste time on that but I cut a, a really thick piece of it it was actually from hand soap when it was empty the straw part I cut a piece of that off because a regular drinking straw was not thick enough to hold it but that was pretty strong and that's my that's my tip for tape my tip tape tip um anyway I took a little piece of that I didn't even bother going to the complete edges it you can, you don't have to, but I covered the back of the spine, not the inside. This is going to be the inside. I really feel you only need to do one side, and because it is um, shiny, it doesn't want to take ink, obviously, as well as dry paper. So that is where I bring out my paper file and I file over to scratch it up once I scratch it up then I put ink on it let it dry and I put a second coat of ink on it my papers are going to come so close to the edge you're not really going to that's not going to be a, a concern for me if it is for you you don't have to reinforce it if you don't have the tape or you don't want to or you can figure out a different way to reinforce your spine um, I've used that VTech uh, on, on spines it's just I've found sometimes the the thicker you go on a spine the harder it is to uh, not only manipulate your scoring lines but just to keep it closed and then I'm scoring harder and pressing harder. Next thing you know, I, I I weaken the spine just trying to get it to be more uh, maneuverable. 
So I, I just like this thin dollar outlet tape. And uh, pardon the noise, I'll try to take it away from the thing. And I just put it down over it. It doesn't it doesn't even matter if it wrinkles because we we sand that out. Then I take a car an, an old card and just really press it down. I even kind of press it up against the the score lines. It doesn't really matter if there's a little wrinkle in there or a little it doesn't matter. If you're worried about bending it as you can see it's the, the tape is so thin that it doesn't it doesn't stop or or in any way inhibit the score lines but you you can gently you, you really don't have to go that tape from the dollar tree is so thin i have a love hate relationship with that but that's for a different video then i take my uh nail file but it's for paper i keep it in here and i just rough it up a little bit i do only i put it at kind of an angle so that i'm not just filing away right over the crease where I definitely want the tape. I want the tape. I want the tape right on the score lines. So I don't want to completely saw through the tape there. And then I grab my ink. I'm, I'm using walnut stain on this particular one, but you use whatever one you have. And then I just ink up the edges. Like I said, I let it dry and give it a second coat. And it's it's really that simple. That simple. There you go. I've already sanded this one down, so I'm just gonna, I think I did. So, there you go. Reinforced gently. Okay, so I'm, I just wanted to show you that. I actually have my file folder here that we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to make this one. I just wanted to give you a heads up that's what you were seeing the brown on it for and that was what I was going to be doing you don't have to do that step you don't have to ink if you don't want just wanted to show you my my tape okay for I'm not sure why I got my scoreboard out first sorry because we will be cutting this file for this file folder so if you have your papers picked and you want to make your file folder the size of your of your paper just a hair bigger than your paper now would be the the time to measure that or sit it up set it up and, and make your marks i do want to say that i used to leave these extra little ends on because i thought they were fancy and really cute that for me makes a problem when I go to put paper on it because when I leave it plain with no paper then it looks sloppy and messy and not cool and when I try to put paper on it I really mess it up because it's for me I can't I can't get that nicely done with paper so I have started just cutting the end off I and it actually looks neater so that's what we're going to do we're cutting that off that gets thrown away then uh i didn't go right to the edge i can round that corner now i'm going to get my paper i'm doing mine in half this way so i'm just gonna without measurement i'm gonna just try to 
Now I have my halfway point. And I want to make sure I get that. So I'm just going to measure where I want my paper. And it doesn't, uh, you, if you want a bigger gap, go for that. If you want no gap, go for that. I like to go somewhere in the middle. I like a tiny little paper because I ink. And I'm not totally exact. So if I, I just give a tiny little bit, 16th, and I'm throwing that out there. 16th and I'm going to cut on the, that all right let me just make sure I'm in frame here because all right obviously we always keep these I have a whole folder of these that I dig into when I need extra for this all right I'm gonna put that aside and get my scoring board because this is where the scoring comes in and this is where people get intimidated and there's really no need to be intimidated when you're working with these file folders one if you get them at the Dollar Tree they're literally a dollar a dozen <laughs> so um, if you get them at Walmart in a much larger pack they're actually cheaper Walmart does sell a heavy-duty one which I did get but I unwrapped all mine and now I have them all mixed up so I don't know which which one this is you can put your tape on if you're taping now or you can wait I'm I'm just gonna wait because I'm not entirely sure where I want my my uh, spine to to end up I can tell you I this particular folder only has two score marks already in there sort of and I'm going to use them if I can. And this is where you can decide how how big of a spine you want. So let's get my handy dandy uh, thing and just see. Okay, so the first, I don't know if you can see that with the light, but so it is uh, one, two, three, four. It's basically four, a tiny bit more actually. Um, it's not even a half inch, but to use both score lines are one, one, two, three, gee, my eyesight's, hurt. my eyesight today. Um, so I think I, I'm going to try making it this one bigger. I think this one, I only used the one score line. It actually gave me three score lines to choose from. I only used two and made a, like what it would be about a quarter inch spine this one i'm gonna make i hope it's not a mistake i'm gonna make it um, a, a little bit bigger i'm gonna use both those well i'm gonna use the last one that's in there so mine will be almost an inch not quite an inch like three quarters of an inch so i didn't even have to use my scoreboard for that I just used their score mark and I left the middle score mark and I'm going to probably, well on the inside definitely put a piece of paper and probably on the outside, yes definitely on the outside. So um, that will get reinforced just with extra paper. So you can decide how thick, I want this one thick so that when I fill it it's not still acting like an alligator mouth. There's nothing wrong with that. Most of mine do that. I just didn't want this to do that. Okay, I don't know where I put my... Now we're going to score. If I can find my scoring uh, tool. I don't know where I put it, so let me get my other one. Okay. Literally that simple. I'm going to bring my paper back because now that I've already measured how high I want it, 
I already know where my half mark is because I folded it there. That's so I don't want it bigger than my half mark. Smaller's fine, but not bigger. So if I fold it on my half mark and hold it up. That's about where I want to do my next score line, which would be right. You want to give it a little bit. You want to be able to fit your paper in there. So I'm going to do a score line there. So I measured from this score line. Let me mark it. Let me mark my two score lines, and you'll see why we're going to need to put tape, tape on these. Because you can kind of already see the wear as the little bits of fold in the paper start to crack. So we will be putting tape on this. All right. Um, I'm just trying to decide which way I want to fold it. I guess I want my flap on the bottom. So this is my outside. This will be my inside. So I take my paper that I folded in half. That's how big I want one side to be. I don't take it all the way to that score line. You want to leave it uh, just a hair away. Why is my paper not cooperating with me? So you leave it. Maybe it'd be easier to see if I fold it the other way. That you could actually see. Good idea, Gerald. Okay. And I hope I'm in frame. Let me check. Okay. So, you see where I, I already put my, my little mark. That's where I want it. From that score line to my little mark. Now I want to move it over and mark it on this side the same. I want from that little score line and I want to just give it a hair over here to that, oh, a little much, okay, to that score line. There we go. That's what I want. Okay, so now we have the two marks where we're going to do our next score. So I'm going to just line that up to any number because it does not matter. Pray to the straight gods that my cut is straight. And I'm just going to score on that. Score on that. Then I'm going to move it. I want, I need to put a tiny spine in here. I'm going to make it a quarter inch. So I'm going to put another score line in a quarter inch away. Okay, so now I have two score lines, which I will mark. They're going to get bent inward, and you don't have to flatten them out with your, with your scoring tool. You just want a tiny box like corner or edge all right now on this side I'm going to do the same thing you can put it up to any number I want this first score line sort of or pencil mark I should say and I'm gonna just score on there then I'm gonna go a quarter inch don't worry about how thin or fat your don't, don't worry about that and just fold it in think outside now we have our two sides and it folds and once we get these Correctly, they will fold correctly when when we're done. All right, let's check.
check to make sure this one looks like the folder may be a tiny bit a hair off. We'll have to see later. If it's a hair off, we will trim it. But there it is. Now I'm going to ink these two on the inside so you can see. What did I do with my, with my ink? There it is. Here's my ink pad. Again, I'm using walnut stain, but you can use whatever. In my original one, I did use coffee. Um, in, in the original video, I used archival ink in coffee, but this one I am not. Now you're gonna bring that in a little bit. I know. Don't don't worry about the uneven marks. All that will get covered. I'm not gonna fret with the small stuff, right? Just covering that. Right. That's our inside. And you want to keep inside and outside separate, and that will be easier to do once you tape your outside, because we're taping it on the outside. But in the meantime, we want to mark our all our score lines with ink if you're inking. If you're not inking, skip this part, skip ahead. Skip ahead, because I am inking everything. I always ink everything. down kind of just go back and forth so little of this will be sticking out you're not going to see the you're not going to see what you don't want to see okay so that's all my inside marks outside going to put a layer of ink on the outside but we are putting tape over it so I suggest just so we keep it straight just mark it out uh, on a couple different panels you're going to cover it with paper you can even erase it before you cover it with paper but we do want to keep our inside and outside clearly marked so we don't get confused Oop. We're marking these first because then we're going to put tape down. We're going to color over, we're inking over the tape as well. But for now, we're just I hope that's not too noisy. Sorry if it is. I, I never know if putting away my scoreboard is going to be more noisy. Leaving it out. <laughs> okay. Just mark the edges. Now we can look and see which side. Okay, out. That's why we mark it. Okay. We can put the ink away for now. And we're going to get out the noisier tape which let me put my scoreboard away so that I don't have all that uh, that probably would have been much more helpful had I done to begin with okay now we know this is the outside because it's marked out out we're gonna take our tape sorry for the noise I'll take it away from the and you can either let it stick out and trim it off, which I'll do that to this just because I don't feel I'm just going to trim it off the bottom. But I normally do not feel like it has to go all the way to the bottom once you have it on there. All right, I'm going to pull it off. 
get my scissors. You could fold it in. You, you really could. I... The only reason I don't I don't do that I it, it depends I guess on my project but I'm not doing that now so okay we have one down two more pieces to go so sorry for the noise it's a little short but I don't care I'll just move it up get your old card. Make sure it's good and flat. I mean right away you don't even have to re-score re, uh, anything. That tape is so thin. That is great. Okay again with the tape. Don't, don't need to hear. Again, don't don't really worry. Don't fret on the wrinkles. We will. Just make sure it's kind of in the. Make sure it bends. It does. Just gonna get it in the spine there where it belongs. Get it down. Make sure I'm in frame. Sorry about keep checking about where I am, but if I don't keep checking if I'm in frame, I'm always out of frame. And when I, the closer I bring the camera, the easier it is to get out of frame. Okay, now we get our paper filer. You can use the rougher side or the softer side. I use the softer side and I tilt it at an angle just to get inside the spine, trying not to over sand right on those score marks because that's really what you're trying to protect here. So, just gonna. Do all that. And then we're going to ink over that. Just I think I, it helps to put, I think it helps the look if you put a little bit of ink under it. We already have some of those colors under there. If you want. Okay, let me see. Sometimes you have to go maybe just on these sides do a little bit rougher okay and back to the ink if you're inking so sorry about all the ink and you don't have to ink all the the tape I scratch up the tape on the sides really well to glue to, not not to ink. Um, I lightly scratch the score marks, one, so that it does take ink, but a little bit, and uh, doesn't have just a pure shiny, like I... That's outside because we have it marked. This is inside. No tape. No tape on the inside. But all this tape will get covered with, with paper or whatever you're covering it with. So there we have our beginnings. And I think just for the sake right now, we're just going to re- the the corners now my I guess my tip is if you're gonna do all your corners you can wait till you cover it with paper otherwise 
every time you do your corners ink then you cover it then you redo the corners re-ink it's probably just easier to wait till you cover it with paper and then cut once if you're using a thick paper and a thick cardboard well you may want to not abuse your your uh, corner rounder I do I I it's my hobby so let's see my walnut stain you could ink the flap or not I don't know if you're did I call that a flap um I like to leave these with no paper but I may normally but I may cover these with paper but and I'm going to do the edges because when I put my paper on it's a, t a tiny bit it might show will show so I I want to I want to bring in the ink a little bit and just have those edges of those papers covered a little like that and you want to do both sides even if you're using material on the outside because I don't know what you're covering yours with mine will be paper and I suggest paper it's easier if you make a mistake to fix and it's less hurtful if you make a big mistake and have to uh, file it in the bin. I hate to use the word throw away, but I will say the other day I ended up going through a basket of projects that I started and never finished or continued and they were not far along I think if a project is far along then I I will at some point finish it but these were just started very very beginnings of something I'm not even sure what I was going after with some of them and I kept them because every time I go through the basket I think oh wow if I can use that for a different project I don't even have to try to keep making the same project but this time I, I really did decide you know what it's <laughs> it's just sort of a um, kind of an overwhelming feel when I start going through all the things I started and didn't finish it's easier to get them off my plate so I can move forward otherwise I feel bad when I keep going through the basket so I, I went through them and really the things I was just sitting there being confused about, like what was I thinking? And we all have them. We all have them. Don't, don't pretend. And I thought I'm just getting rid of it, getting it out of here so that I don't got to keep digging it out and then scolding myself. So out it went okay again out and out thank goodness we marked them right and there we have it so far the beginnings of it next we're gonna make uh, a piece for I'm gonna call it a, a tablet or a writing type let me get to the one I have. This is the one I made for my other one, which is a, this one will be slightly bigger. Um, so this looks a tad small for this one, because it is. But we are going to make one. So I'm going to get out my pieces of scraps and just see if I have one, a scrap. That is not quite big enough, so I will have to, which is why I told, oh, that's a nice one, that's why I told uh, you to get extra, 
of these keep that together bring an extra file folder too because now we're going to use one to make a a tablet and i love when i make the tablet i guess i didn't show you on this one you see how it has the tab i love when the tab folds in just trying to get a piece of paper here see how i left the tab i i like that look i like when i do a tablet and have some sort of fancier edge you don't have to if you have a piece of file folder and it just has a straight straight edge and you fold it down you could put fancy paper over it or whatever but but i actually like the the look so i'm not gonna i'm just gonna cut this well i'm gonna cut it where i need it that's smarter okay so i know i want this to fold down so i don't want to measure there i want to i'm gonna fold it down about there you don't need exacts but so i'm just gonna mark it there that's where i want to cut it there and then i'm going to I'm going to put a belly band in the back of this one, I believe. So I want a good enough amount on both sides that I can glue a belly band down and still slide this because this will be the back that gets slid behind the belly band to hold the tablet pages. So that's where I want it. Made my decision. Bring my. Bring my file folder. Whoops, sorry. I bumped anyone. All right. Okay, so now I'm just putting that in. Actually, I better do it the other way because I won't get a straight enough cut. So we're going to do it this way. And I'm just going to... Boy, do I abuse my, my tools. Okay, and then here is where I have my other mark. So I'm going to cut on that mark. This is my leftover piece and it goes in my folder. This will be my, my tablet. And definitely wanted enough room on both sides so that I can glue a belly band down up high, glue a belly band sideways and slide this part in behind the belly band. So where do I want to make my, I want it about here. That's where I want to score and fold over. I'm going to get my little scoreboard out. And I'm going to find I'm going to find the middle, just making sure I have it lined up. I'm just going to score it here. Okay. Hills and valleys, valleys and hills. I never know what way to fold it. There we go. So now this piece will be our tablet for in here. And if you're covering this, I again would not round the edges unless unless you want to or you're not an edge rounder but there that's the tablet that's going to go in and i i do think because we did both sides the same so it, it could go in either side but we want a tablet so now we have the tablet i'm going to 
ink where I know because even if I put paper here or whatever the I, I want I'm not gonna run the paper to the edge if you glue a strip down and then trim out around it then none of your paper none of your fold, file folder will stick out but I never do that I don't I'm not good at, at scissoring work even though I love to fussy cut I'm just not uh, really good at that so all right um, you're not gonna see underneath the you will see here so I'm gonna do that let me just lay it down ink get out my ink just do what I did and everything else and I may put decorate you know put paper down or something on the back here oh this is a thick fire folder I can feel the difference with my okay just in case we see that I'll just give that a quick once over do the back And I love the dark and, and grungy. And if I am making this one, my Halloween one, I may even just slightly go over the, just the edges with, with one of my black inks, just to give it that extra dark, spooky look. Okay. So there, you don't need a, a huge tablet, just a couple pieces, a couple, probably coffee stained, wrinkly, yeah. distressed and inked myself as much as my folder here. But here we have it, the beginnings, the base. And if you do this, you don't even have to follow anymore. You can go for it. You can cover it with paper, book pages, newspaper, magazine, other digitals. It it doesn't matter. Whatever, whatever floats your boat. But you now have the base. I have two bases now. I want. I didn't even ink, finish inking this one, but here's my. My original so there we have it both this one will look more like a flap like this when we round that edge so it won't be straight it will be like these okay well I'll be back and cover mine with with my paper one or the other or both and i hope you join me for that but if not and you just did this part have a blast go work on it otherwise i'll see you in the next one happy crafting hugs